So the Primaris Desolation Squad was an easy punching bag with their oversized Nerf guns. But can I really make a better Brutalis Dreadnought than Games Workshop? The Blood Angel in me really hopes so. Welcome to Hobby with Ollie, where today I'm converting up my own Brutalis Dreadnought, a melee focused monster, which was revealed in the upcoming Strike Force Agastus box. I started with a Redemptor Dreadnought as the main body for this conversion, and then also picked up a Leviathan Dreadnought for the arms. There are various other bits that I use to add some Blood Angels flair. Let's kick things off with the body. Now I've always thought the Redemptor represents everything Games Workshop did right with the release of Primaris Marines. Distinctive silhouette? Check. Cool new guns that still tap into 80s style technology? Check. The only thing that's been missing is a melee variant. In the recently revealed Strike Force Agastus box, which is upcoming from Games Workshop, they announced the Brutalis Dreadnought, which should give us just that. But I don't really want to wait, so I'm going to make my own. I started by building the main Redemptor chassis, following the instructions until I got to mounting the central sarcophagus. As this Brutalis will be run in my Blood Angels, he's going to be a Death Company Dreadnought. That means I want a suitably scary skull sarcophagus in the middle. I took mine from one of the alternate faces from the Blood Angels Dreadnought sprue, clipping out the sarcophagus from its attached shoulder parts. I was careful here as I wanted to use these shoulders as additional extra armour, and even though I ended up pinging one of them across the room, I did manage to recover them with minimal damage. Now the Blood Angels Dreadnought sprue is awesome, it comes with the parts for the Librarian Dreadnought, Furioso Dreadnought, and Death Company Dreadnought, which gives you loads of bits to play around with when doing Dreadnought conversions. I debated sticking the shoulder panels to the centre of the Dreadnought body, but to attempt to match the Brutalis' extra armour panels, I opted to stick them a bit further out, closer to the arms. I used white tack here to give me an idea of how everything would look once stuck together. Hobby tip here, use white tack or blue tack to stick everything together without putting it in place permanently. This lets you get an idea of what your kit bash is going to look like, particularly if it's something a bit more out there. The Redemptor has a swinging part that locks the sarcophagus in place. As I want to be able to see the whole of my Death Company sarcophagus, this needed some modification. I cut out the middle section, preserving the part that slots in at the bottom, and then left the side pieces attached with a bit of space around the sarcophagus. These look a little messy at the moment, but that won't matter as we're going to add a few greebles to cover over the work. Some stolen wires from spare orc gun bits are slotted into the gaps. This really helps to sell the Dreadnought as a life support machine, but also weapon of war of last resort. I also finally stuck down the extra shoulder armour at this point. And so here is the completed torso. Unlike the Redemptor, the Brutalis is designed to get up close and personal, so let's give him a slightly more dynamic pose with his legs. I was surprised at how dynamic a pose you can get out of the Redemptor kit. It's got these cool little spindles that connect into a gap in the legs, allowing for just about any pose you want. One of the feet remains planted to the floor for stability purposes, but the other one has poseable toes so you can get a real sprinter pose going on. Just ideal for our feral Death Company Dreadnought. With the legs attached to the body, it's time to get creative with the weaponry. It also means it's time to address the Leviathan in the room. Now I can only get my hands on a full Leviathan, but most of what you need is on a single sprue which Games Workshop does sell as an upgrade kit, so save those hobby dollars where you can. The arms on this aren't an exact match for the Brutalis, but let's be honest here, these big chunky claws are going to look awesome on the Redemptor chassis. Now my original plan was closer to the initial design of the Brutalis, to use the Furioso Dreadnought claws, again off of that Blood Angels Dreadnought sprue. However, due to the scale creep that's happened over the years, the Blood Angels Dreadnoughts look a little like children compared to the Redemptor. The Leviathan has a much chunkier silhouette, which should make it match onto the Redemptor a lot better, at least in theory. After checking the instructions for ways to bash the arms together, I built up the Redemptor shoulders as far as I could. These have a neat locking mechanism allowing you to repose on the go, but for whatever reason, mine kept getting stuck. After snapping off parts due to attempting to repose using a pair of pliers, I decided it was time for a bit of a modification. I cut off the little tabs that are meant to hold the arms in place, which will mean that I have a bit more poseability on the arm without worrying about it getting stuck. Now one of the issues I knew I was going to run into with this build was that the Redemptor only has one melee arm. For the other arm I'm going to have to get a little bit creative, but let's do the melee arm first. I built up the parts for the Leviathan claws, excluding the shoulder parts. 
Matching the pieces up on the melee arm was a simple case of snipping off the Redemptor cog-shaped piece where it attaches to the normal Redemptor arm, and then gluing the Leviathan arm in place with plastic glue. I set this aside to dry, and moved on to tackle the other arm. Again, I built up the Redemptor shoulder as before, but this time the gun weapon arm has an angled piece that makes the arm stick out at a weird angle. To reduce this, I trimmed down the Redemptor's armpit area to allow the fist to be held closer into the body. With the shoulder sorted, there's still a problem. The ranged weapon arm is still going to be a bit shorter than the melee arm if I leave it as it is. To solve this, I used one of the Storm Bolter mountings from the Redemptor kit. This was exactly the right size and diameter to slot in as an extra arm spacer. Now, when gluing it, a smarter man than myself could have come up with an ingenious solution to make sure it was really stable. However, the option I went with was a little piece of sprue, load of plastic glue, and hope for the best. This did cause me problems later, as well as the fact that one of my main hobby problems is that I get too excited and I'd move things when they should be drying or setting. That probably didn't help either. With that done, the Leviathan arm was added to the Redemptor shoulder, and I finished off the arms with the Leviathan elbow pads and the little wires. I'd also accidentally left off some of the mechanism on the ends of the claws, the little part that kind of flaps up and down as the claws move, but it just so happened this was the perfect size to cover over the join where the wires meet the Redemptor chassis. I'm starting to think somebody at Games Workshop's design team has made these kits a lot more compatible than they may seem at first glance. Lastly, the Leviathan's heavy flamers were stuck into the area where the Redemptor's storm bolters should be, and a hastily retrieved iron hail heavy stubber was repurposed from the bits box to put on the top. This did require minor modifications to fit on the Redemptor's top weapon mounting bracket. With all that, the conversion is finished. I gave him a quick paint job following a guide from the early days of the channel. While some of that painting process runs in the background, I'll take this opportunity to thank you for watching the video so far and for your interest in my videos recently. It's great to get to do some fun kit bashing and hopefully inspire you to try out some kit bashes of your own. Speaking of which, let me know what you're currently working on in the comments down below. While you're there, why not hit the subscribe and the bell button so you can be notified when I release my next video. If you are thinking of doing a project like this yourself, please do consider heading to the links in the description below for Element Games. Element Games offers things at a discounted price compared with Games Workshop, and if you follow those links, I'm going to get a small kickback on anything that you purchase at no additional cost to you. It really helps out the channel, so thank you for anyone following those links. With all that said, here he is, the Brutalis Dreadnought ready to eviscerate the enemies of the Imperium. Thank you so much for watching this video. For more Strikeforce Agastus related stuff, I do have a video of converting my own Primaris Desolation Squad in the top right hand corner. There's also a load of other hobby related stuff here on the channel. I release new videos every Sunday from kit bashing, painting, and just general hobby chat. Until the next one, my name has been Ollie. This has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.